Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Rod talking to you from Word of Faith Family Church in wonderful Wilmer, Minnesota. It's good to be back with you this evening or morning or afternoon, whenever time you watch this um, message. I'm going to read from the first chapter of the book of Psalms and the first verse through the third verse out of the Amplified Bible. It says this, Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive, inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. But his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord, and on his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God, he habitually meditates, ponders, and studies by day and by night. He shall be like a tree firmly planted and tended by the streams of water, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not fade or wither, and everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. So that verse of scripture has a lot of opportunities for us and, and to choose right and wrong. You know, so if I had to entitle this evening's uh, little message, I, I entitle it, Choose Well. We need to choose our relationships well. We need to choose what projects that we get involved in well, even if you're in ministry. You know, oftentimes we may be caught in trying to uh, copycat what somebody else has been told told by God to do, and, and it's not ours to do, but it's theirs to do. Uh, you know, we have a choice in the media intake that we, you know, flood ourselves with, our, our minds with. And another thing you can concentrate on too much, and, and really instructed by the Bible not to concentrate very much on it, if any, is your past. Your well-being, your spirit, your soul, your body, it's on you. It's not on your mama. It's not on your daddy. It's not on your pastor. It's not on your wife. It's not on your husband. It's on you. Your well-being is on you. So delight yourself in the law of the Lord. Psalm chapter 1 has a, is a great... Uh, verse of scripture, verses one through three, that, that, that give us keys in how to take care of ourselves, to be, you know, to take care of our well-being. We need to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord, meditate day and night in God's word, observe to do, be a doer of God's word, not a, not a hearer only. Then and only then will you make your way prosperous. Then and only then you will have good success. We need to learn every day, day and night, day and night. Learn every day. You are either doing things that are bringing you closer to your goals or your destination or further away from your goals or the plan that God has for your life, or you're doing things to bring you closer to your goals. You are who you are by the people you have met and who you hang around with. You know that saying, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You, you, those people that you spend a lot of your time with have a big influence on your life and you have an influence on their lives. So choose well who you invest your time in and you will be who you will be in five years by the people you will meet in the future. And the books that you read and the media you allow into your life. So choose well. Choose well. Be a, be a wise investor in your time. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. The less that you govern yourself, you're governed by others or circumstances and other outside things. I mean, this past year has been a, an example of the governing elite trying to take over and govern away the will of the people. It was a year ago, I believe yesterday or today, where, where here in the United States, the lockdowns began. And, and, and governing began by fear, canceling many freedoms, 
governing what can be said, governing which businesses can remain open and which ones must stay closed, even governing whether or not churches can be open. Tonight, what I want to say is enough is enough, bless God. We are free in Christ, and we as the United States of America citizens, we have freedoms based upon the Constitution. Just because of a crisis, just because of a pandemic, does not wipe away the truth of God's Word, and it does not wipe away the Constitution of the United States of America. And whatever country you may be listening from, don't follow the herd mentality. I'll tell you what the herd mentality is, I've found out this last year, is fear, fear, fear. Go the opposite direction of the way of the masses. Again, don't follow the herd mentality. It'll lead you to the slaughterhouse. Don't jump off the cliff with the masses. And don't live an entitled life. Don't expect the government to rescue you. I like what President Reagan said. He said, this is a definition of an oxymoron, is when someone knocks at your door and you answer your door and there's someone from the government that says, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. No more cases than not. In a lot of cases, government is the problem because it, what it tries to do is get people to depend on it so the governing, those that are in the governing class can manipulate those that has given out everything to. They're, they're manipulating for the vote. So don't be deceived. Amen. You've got to do the work. Don't rely on the government. And it's been stated, uh, uh, I don't know if the authorship is Thomas Jefferson, but others have said this. Uh, a government big enough to give you everything you want is strong enough to take everything that you have. Wake up, America. Wake up, church. Wake up. You get up and you do what needs to be done. Be responsible for your life. Amen. If you've got yourself into debt, don't look at somebody else to get you out. Work yourself out. Change your ways of, and habits. Quit spending more than you make. Amen. James chapter 1, says, But be doers of the word. Verse 25 in the Amplified said, But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, or we could say the word of God, and is faithful to it, and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. He shall be blessed in his doing, blessed in what he does. Live in and with the discipline to do what needs to be done. Too many will say this, well, what if it doesn't work? I'll say, what if it does? What if it does? That's where faith steps in. You know, when, when the thought comes, what if it doesn't work? And you say, you know, by faith, what if it does? What if it does? Your day and your days are what you look at, good or bad. What comes out of your mouth, good or bad. We need to proclaim, we need to believe that this is the day that the Lord has made. And proclaim, I will be glad in this day that the Lord has made and that he has given me to be a more than a conqueror in this day. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made and has designed me to conquer. I will be glad. Not sad, not mad, but glad in this day that the Lord has made, and thank God for the Holy Spirit who will lead and who will guide me through this day in victorious living, in Jesus' name. Don't judge today or any day by what happened or didn't happen 
yesterday. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 said, Though the Lord's mercies were not, through the Lord's mercies were not consumed, because his compass compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Notice it says it is, they are new every morning. It doesn't say it's new every morning, but this morning. Or it's new every morning, but tomorrow morning. No, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 tells us what we need to do with our past. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I like to say it this way. Get off your behinds and press forward to those things that God has you for this day in the mercy that he's given you this morning. Great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Quit driving your life by always looking in the rearview mirror. Keep your eyes forward and look forward through the windshield. The rearview mirror is tiny compared to the windshield. Your future is much bigger than your past. When you look at it through the word of God, when you look at it through the eyes of God, when you look at it through the blood of Jesus Christ and look at it through the resurrection and you look at it through those people that God has connected you with, going forward with you, encouraging you and you being an encouragement to them. Keep your eyes on the present and the future because what God has for you today is greater than what he had for you yesterday. We're to go from glory to glory. We're to go from his mercies every single morning. Take your eyes and take your mind and take your mouth off the past. Look and live past your past. The word I've got for you tonight is go, 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 go forward. Don't stop and don't look back, but look forward, look upward, because all good things come from above. One thing we can do, and I, I heard this from a podcast that I that I listen to frequently, and it's it's from a, 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 a retired special forces. He said this, learn from your past, prepare for the future, and perform in the present. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, and I'll be glad in this day that the Lord has made, given me to conquer. A good friend of mine, Pastor Jeff Warner, said this, we are not born winners, we're not born losers, we are born choosers. So choose well. Don't be frozen with fear. Don't be frozen by the doom and gloomers on the media or people you may be in contact with. You know, if someone's down, give them a positive word. Keep the positive word of God's word in your heart, in your mind, and allow it to come out your mouth. Praise God. God is faithful. He is faithful. His compassion fails not. His mercies are new every single morning. Father, I'm so grateful for the word of God. I'm so grateful for your mercy, for your compassion. We thank you, Father, that we can walk in your wisdom, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, our guide, our strengthener. Thank you, Father, for the risen Savior, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the redemption that he's given us through the, his shed blood. Thank you for the healing power of the stripes that, were, that he bore upon his back. Thank you, Lord, for, for the peace of heart and mind that Jesus suffered for so that we wouldn't have to suffer with. Thank you for it in the wonderful, matchless, glorious name of our King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just want to remind you that if you live in the Wilmer area, Sunday morning, 
Come on out to 3010 7th Avenue Northwest in Wilmer. Join us at Word of Faith Family Church. Our service starts at 10. Our live stream will start at 1030 for those of you that cannot make it. Wednesday night, we also have started our Wednesday evening service. And that's at 7 o'clock. We have uh, uh, provision for both on Wednesday and Sunday for children and youth. Uh, and then we also have nursery on Sunday mornings. So come on out and, and fellowship. The Bible says that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Thank God for what we can do online and live stream. But there's just something about gathering together. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. We pray for you. Until next time, see you again.